Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, esteemed professors, doctors, guests, colleagues, and participants from all over the world. Welcome to Post-Pandemic Challenge on Early Childhood Development, an international webinar conducted by the International Pediatric Association. Uniting thousands of registrants from all over the world, the Post-Pandemic Challenge on Early Childhood Development International Webinar discusses important issues concerning challenges and struggles brought by the COVID-19 pandemic on early childhood development. Before beginning today's webinar, we would like to inform you of the rundown of this webinar. We will begin with a welcoming address from the president of the International Pediatric Association, followed by our honorable keynote speaker. Then we will have the presentations from our distinguished panel of experts, moderated by our esteemed moderators. There will then be a question and answer session with all our speakers at the end of the webinar. For the smooth running of today's event, kindly pay attention to the following rules and regulations. Participants are encouraged to have their videos turned on throughout the webinar. Participants should keep their microphones off unless permitted by the moderators. And to obtain a certificate of attendance, participants are required to attend the entire duration of the webinar and fill in a feedback form which will be distributed at the end of the event. I will now invite our honorable first speaker to deliver the opening To officially open the, the to officially open the webinar, we will now respectfully invite our first speaker to deliver the opening remarks. Professor Enver Hasanoglu, MD, FAAP, is the president of the International Pediatric Association, Secretary General of the Turkish National Pediatric Society, and Secretary General of the Union of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean Pediatric Societies. He has also held the rectorship position uh, in Gazi University, Ankara, Turkey, between 1992 to 2000. He was the Dean of the Medical School for nine years and a member of the Turkish Higher Education Council for four years. For the past 20 years, he has been involved in many programs in Turkey and in the Middle East region, especially on immigrant child health matters. He has been awarded many honorary fellowship titles by various societies across the world for his tireless work and contributions to child health. Without further ado, to the professor who needs no introduction, to Professor Hasan Oglu, the time and screen is yours. Thank you, thank you so much. Dear colleagues and participants, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar entitled Post-Pandemic Challenge on Early Childhood Development. As you know, Early childhood development was already a challenge for more than 250 million children all over the globe before the pandemic. The WHO and UNICEF has developed the nutrition care framework for promotion of early childhood development and recommended all nations to consider it as national priority. The five main components of nutrition care being health, nutrition, responsive caregiving, security and safety, and opportunities for early learning. During the pandemic, not the infection only, but the restriction and its consequence hit the children as well. The Lancet editor, Richard Horton, so defined it not as a pandemic, but as syndemic. Disruption in services, not only in hospitals, but preventive health care services, rehabilitation, social services, nutrition, schools, increased inequalities and increased poverty. The psychosocial effect on the parents and children were all affected negatively our children's development. Now, the world seemed to come to control the pandemic. We have 
work much harder to compensate the gap years. Now we are in new area. We are now that we need new strategies, new solutions, but in fact, the needs of the children are same to name the nutrition care framework. In the new area, governments needs to address the financial instability of parents. We have to expand and strengthen the schools to address learning gaps, rethink this healthcare delivery focus on preventation and early intervention for mental health. And while using the increasing digital solutions address in equitable services delivery. I believe this webinar will contribute to advocating for and working in collaboration for the promotion of early childhood development I would like to thank all our speakers, whom all are competent on their subject, of course, to the participants and to you all. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Professor Hassan Oglu, for your opening remarks and the important reminder to us all. The next agenda of our webinar will be moderated by two very special and distinguished moderators. It is my great honor today to introduce our moderators for the session. Dr. Carlos Alonso Rivera has been a pediatrician and a pediatric neurologist for more than 25 years. He has been a professor of pediatrics and neurology for over 30 years as well. He was also the founder of the Pediatric Neurology Residency Program at the Autonomous University of San Luis Potosi. Over the years, he has been the president of various local, national, and international medical societies, among which are the Mexican Society of Pediatric Neurology and the National Confederation of Pediatrics of Mexico. He currently serves as the Vice President of the Latin American Association of Pediatrics and as the Co-Chair of the IPA Strategic Advisory Group on Early Childhood Development. Good afternoon, Doctor, and thank you very much for your time and for being with us today. Thank you very much. Our, thank you very much. Our second webinar, uh, our second moderator is Dr. Naveen Thacker. Dr. Naveen Thacker is the director of Deep Children Hospital and Research Center and an adjunct professor of pediatrics at Pramukhswami Medical College. He is the president-elect of the International Pediatric Association for the year 2021 to 2023 and the secretary of the Child Health Foundation. He is a former president of the Asia Pacific Pediatric Association for the years 2016 to 2018 and is a national president President of the Indian Academy of Pediatrics for the year 2007. Without further ado, to Dr. Tacker, the time and screen is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Admin Office. Uh, may, uh, yeah, so it is my uh, honor to introduce uh, Dr. Helia Molina, who is by training a medical doctor and pediatrician and uh, she has an excellent career in academics, undergraduate, postgraduate training in area of public health and health, health politics, policies, management and maternal and child health care. And with vast international and national experience. Uh, did I say politics? Well, yes. So she has also been Minister of Health uh, in Chile and uh, uh, now Regional Advisor on Child Development Health at Pan American Health Office the Regional Office of World Health Organization. Uh, a very strong advocate for public health and women, children, and adolescent health, good skills for development of networks and mobilizing resources. She is member of Chilean Congress at the House of Representatives in Chile. Uh, uh, Dr. Helia, floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, really, really, for your presentation. Good afternoon, good morning for me, it's morning for you, it's afternoon and for some ones are at night. Really, I want to say thank you for inviting me for this important event in a crucial moment for our children, communities and societies. The world has experienced a tremendous health, economic and social crisis due to the COVID pandemic. And as usual, the negative effects 
are more significant in the most vulnerable population. We all know the importance of the first thousand days in life in early childhood development, a period with critical stage and the window of opportunities um, are very short. Nutrition conditions, stimulation, positive and proactive um, uh, interaction with the family, with the context, resources and sufficient basic services are required. Even though boys and girls have not been among the main victims of the virus, the crisis triggered by the pandemic has placed children in front of a serious obstacles to exercising their rights, both to health and education, as well as to social security. The public health measures that most countries have implemented to control the pandemic have made great, greater obstacles for boys and girls' well-being, with limitation to access routine development care programs, vaccination program, nutrition program, health supervision, timely diagnosis and referrals, as well as being able to play and learn. The pandemic that forced a long period of confinement was locked out in quarantine, generate serious mental health problems in families, increases of violence, greater poverty, shared roles of caregivers and caregivers with multiple functions, social and economic disparities have a clear role in who is affected the most. I'm going to share with you uh, some a presentation to show some uh, data and, and some uh, reflections about uh, why the countries must invest in children now. Now is the moment, we cannot wait. Then, uh, wait a minute, I'm going to share my presentation. Excuse me. Are you seeing the presentation? No, uh, if you wish, uh, if you have shared, the admin office can share. Project. Do you see the presentation? No, we don't. We don't see your presentation. So, wow, what happened? Yeah, so admin office is going to share. Wait a minute. And yeah, no, uh, uh, admin office has started sharing. If you uh, you uh, uh, make it a full screen admin. No, here, no. And now? No, we don't see your presentation. Can I do? Uh, uh, ad, uh, office is now sharing your presentation. You because I have the the Zoom phone, but I I, I don't have. Uh, sorry, so yeah. sorry. So your your presentation is on screen. Uh, you can you can just say next and it can go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay now. Yeah, Helia, you can go ahead. Uh, it's uh, on the screen by so, uh, presented by. Can you can you see? I can see you. No. Uh, ah, here is maybe. Wait a minute. Yeah. So you can you can go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> It, it's projected, Dr. Helia. You can you can just uh, 
C and uh, <coughs> admin office will manage. They will. There is okay. No. Well, no, uh, can I present another presentation? Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Well, the idea is to discuss how we can prioritize early childhood development as a national priority post COVID. Uh, and this is the, the reflection that I, um, and I want to see. First of all, I want to show you some data. Um, a global research, uh, there are a lot of studies in different countries and among many countries, but uh, I'm going to show some few data with the, the research series by say the children in the largest, uh, uh, in the largest, um, I'm sorry. It's a comprehensive study in, in some around uh, 13,000 children and 13,000 caregivers from countries share their experience, fears, hopes, and messages, leaders in this study. The extensive study includes the voices of the marginalized children and general public with our in-depth and focusing on a representative random sample of 25 Santos say the children program participants across 37 countries globally. We should the hidden impact of COVID on children. In learning struggles, for example, globally, more than eight in 10 children felt that they were learning little or nothing at all. And two thirds of parents and caregivers reported child had received no contact from teachers, science, their school uh, participation. Three quarters of the, house, the households lost income as a result of COVID. The vast majority of the high homes, 19.6% reported having trouble paying an essential items and services. In terms of economic struggles, the hidden impact on children Four in five struggle to pay for food and two in five household for diffi have difficult to pay. <laughs> Most parents, caregivers, 89% reported that their access to healthcare, medicine, medical supply has been affected. In terms of psychosocial well being, the hidden impact, the results also show a significant impact on the psychosocial well-being children and their caregivers. More than eight in 10 children report an increase in negative uh, feed. One third of the households had a child or caregiver reporting violence at home. Children report that violence was higher when the school were closed compared to when could attend in person. Why do we need to give priority to invest in early child development? Because children have rights. The Convention of Children's Rights changed the focus of children, objects to be protected to subjects with rights. These rights are universal and integral. All children have the right to develop to their maximum individual potential. This is very clear when, when we see the role of social determinant of health and early child development, how factors and mechanisms grow which social conditions affect the level of development health. The biological expression of social inequality refers to how the people literally incorporate in their bodies and express their biologically inequality experience from the uterus until the producing social inequalities in health in a wide variety of indicators. This is, the, this is a definition in the glossary of Nancy Greer. The social processes give origin to a determinate constellation of biological risks, different profiles of morbid mortality and social group, in social groups. The social processes transform the biological process. Therefore, the biological process it, in itself is at the same time a social process. And this is, this is maybe some a little complex, but it's really, it's really a reality. 
and that's uh, the importance to analyze and reflect about early child development in a broad context and in, in, with an integral uh, orientation. Why do we need to act as soon as possible? Because in the first stage of infancy, there are a huge advantage and opportunity for a person to develop to full potential. Now the scientific evidence, you know, all you know, how neuroscientific evidence and similar disciplines show that in the stage of infancy, human developmental opportunity exists and maybe are not repeated in the later moment of the life cycle of the life course. It has been scientifically demonstrated that biological, economical, social, cognitive, language, development of different competences linked causally to each other throughout a child life cycle. You know the importance of synaptic, the, the number of synaptic, the number of circuits uh, are very, very important in, in the four, six years old. And, and, and this is a, a window of opportunity for interventions because the cost effectiveness of the interventions is huge. All of us, we know that before three years, we, we, have, we have the opportunity to, to optimize all the stimulus and all the possibilities because the plastic of the brain. Why do we need to invest in early child development? Because investing in childhood development is really a good strategy for the society. Not only looking the, the ethical values or the, or the right, but also the economical that now is so important for, for everybody, how is the economic approach and how is the cost effectiveness uh, uh, production. Then the theory of growth and, and international evidence show that population competition is a fundamental determiner of productivity and innovative capacity for, for countries. Evidence also show that investment and in early development can really a very a big return, much higher than later investment of human uh, importance. Here is very, uh, it's not new, but this is, is this uh, graphic of, of, uh, of Dr. Heckman, Nobel Prize of, of Economy, that shows how the, 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 the rate of return to human capital investment is, is the biggest before six years and how is decreasing along the, the life course. Never is, is zero, but uh, really it's very important to understand that each dollar that we invest in to, to today in early child development has a rate of return higher than $10. Then we need to think and we need to use this argument to for advocacy with the politician, with the governments. Then we have the neurophysiology. We, we know the growth and maturation process. We understand that the development is an integral development. We, 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 we have clear opinion maybe that equal opportunities is, is really one of the key issues for a, for, a, for, a, for a justice and a good society. We know that the, the, the early child development is very influenced for, for the family characteristic, for the community characteristic, for the state characteristic, and, and how it is, is so important health, nutrition, uh, the, the characteristic of the of the, the 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 father or mother of work and so on. This is the reason because what we are thinking: what what can we do now in this crisis where where there are a lot of risk factors for early child development? We need to have clear that today, no integrated services really are not be so useful. We need to understand that we need to work in an intersectoral approach 
integrated action based on the people's needs, not based in the offer that I can have as a country. We need to think what the children and the families need and then identify who are going to be the key, the key actors, the key sectors that must be involved in an inter sectoral integrated action. Then we need to, to understand that we, we need to have an, an integral protection system. It is not the same that the program for, for supporting child development. The multiple dimensions of early child development require a simultaneous intervention addressed to the different determinants of an outcomes. Interventions must be opportune and pertinent to the needs of every boys and girl. Early detection of the developmental delays and opportune intervention risk factor allow to take advantage of those windows of opportunity that are present during early childhood. How it's very important to understand that we need to work in a social protection system based on rights. Or today, the population understands the advances of the social changes together with the democratization process of many, many countries have contributed to the composition of a citizenship that has more rights and is more aware of them and therefore demand the exercise and makes them demand. And this is very important because many, many countries are today living crisis in social peace. And then we need to understand that everything is connected. The establishment of a social protection system is a political agreement in which society comes together to set up the basis on which it wants to build and regular coexistence. It determines which rights are for everybody, how they are guaranteed and how they are made viable. Because this is important. We need, we, we need to understand that, that we need different cultures, different ethnic uh, population. We have a uh, migration. We have a uh, different kind of problem, different kinds of, of, of population that have different uh, needs. Why do we need an integrated system protection for children? Because all children should have the same developmental opportunities. And this is for me one of the of the of the of the words that I have here every day in my mind because we need to work for that. The lack of equality with respect to access to developmental opportunities in children that come from diverse socioeconomical uh, area intergenerationally reproduce inequality of origin. And we need that to know that we need that. This is this is an epigenetic explain, which is the, the mechanism because uh, the, there are intergenerational reproduction of inequality, and and this is a, this is really a, a very bad prognosis for our society. There exists a growing consensus that public policies should look for equality of opportunities. We need a, an integrated system of protection for children because children have the right to care, a stimulation, adequate education while their parents work or study out of the home. The incorporation of women to pay activities has a positive impact in terms of, of, of well being, uh, economical well being, but we need to create and put the service and the opportunities and the and the and the conditions to 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 achieve all our children uh, the full potential in the full potential in, in in development the absence of quality health and education alternative for children affect the development and makes work and study difficult for the parents and siblings this is a this is a, an old graphic, but I think that every, every uh, all the days is important to understand that the countries that have family policy generosity, the, these countries have low 
uh, low uh, levels of poverty. We can see how the, 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 the countries uh, that invest in family policy are countries that have less levels of poverty. Well, fundamental principles of a social protection system for early child development. First of all, rise, comprehensive vision of children development. This is very important because when we are, we are um, uh, building a, a, a political or, or, or a strategy, national strategy, local strategy, we need to think uh, in all, the, in all the, the factors that are involved in the, in the process to, to, to work with all that sector and actors to, to uh, integrate the different actions. Recognition of the family as the principal agent. Family with a lot of uh, characteristic families, uh, classic family, mother, father, or mother, mother, father, father, whatever. As the principal agent responsible of the children's comprehensive development and treating their preference options and their labor and our education needs uh, and respect. The importance of the social and community environment for childhood development, protection and personalized support. We need to work in, 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 in the context, in the social determinant of, of initial development, but also we need to uh, give for each ch child uh, along their life course, the different services that the children needs, needs. Well, we need to give biopsychosocial developmental support, detection really as soon as possible, the risk factor as a systematic activity, not only go directly to the level of uh, development in terms of motor development, uh, cognitive, uh, social, and so on, but also it's necessary to understand which are the biopsychosocial risk factors, and it's important to detect that, uh, that risk factor, to, to work in that, and of course, with the children in, in individual uh, aspect too. Humanicide attention at the birth, from the birth, from the, from the pregnant period. Huh? We need to think. And we know that during the process or during the time of, of, of COVID, many, many uh, women in pregnant period, they were with a toxic stress that we know that is very important for, for the future and uh, for the, the, the children in terms of uh, uh, chronic disease and in terms of uh, development and so on. Attention to newborns, safeguarding and favoring the bond and, and of course, breastfeeding, uh, we are pediatrician, we, we know what we, we must to do or to, what are the focus of attention for that. Of course, the family support is important. Huh? We need to, to use uh, different uh, media, uh, a lot, um, how to say in English, uh, educative activities presenting child rearing guidelines. Ayo. Sorry. Uh, massive educative campaigns. Use the media. Utilizing time spending waiting room at health centers. Every, everywhere we need to put early child development top on the agenda. Progress as a, an assistance from local network managed the, by the municipality. In the local level is very important to put all the strategies in, in where the people live, where the people work, where the people have the, 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 the center for, for, for education and, and programs and sectoral assistance managed with criteria for integrated child development urban regulation, late lift toy safety or other objects, not child security among others. It's very important to have a comprehensive network for social services. Each country, each culture, 
has different different network, but I've seen it that in terms of to put focus on the family, health, education, social support, social services, social protection, and so on. Gabriela Mistral is the Sicilian Nobel Prize of Literature. And she said many, many years ago in one of the, the poems, many of the things we need can wait. The child cannot. Now is the time his bones are being formed, his blood is, is, is made, and his senses are being developed. To him, we cannot answer tomorrow. His name is today. Gabriela Mistral uh, died many years ago, but was so visionary because we need to do way. We need to work now, and we need to invest now. Tomorrow is too late. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Dr. Helena. And we will take the question answer in the last. So over to you, uh, Carlos. Yes. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you, Naveen. So after this excellent lecture, we will move on to the next speaker. So it's an honor, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Mongan Akin. She is a pediatric consultant. She's a professor of pediatric and neurology, consultant in neonatology, University of Health Science in Turkey, member of EPA and SIG of Early Child Development in IPA, Turkish Neonatal Society and Turkish Pediatric Association. She's a member of the Infant Mortality Subcommittee and Scientific Committee of Neonatal Resuscitation Program of Turkish Ministry of Health. After graduation from medical school, he has worked in different regions of Turkey as a pediatrician for at least three, 12 years as a neonatologist. She is the chief of pediatrics and neonatology clinics in Istanbul and research and educational hospital of University of Health Sciences. Dr. Mongan, welcome to our webinar, and the microphone is on you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really an honor for me to be able to talk uh, in this webinar. So uh, thanks for everyone. Uh, I will proceed with my uh, slides, and now I'll be talking about the learning opportunities in post-pandemic challenge on early childhood development. Uh, of course, the previous speaker was uh, excellent uh, in explaining the, uh, why we need in so much investment in early childhood development. Uh, so I will uh, proceed from here. Early childhood addresses the period from birth to eight years old, which is the most important uh, period for rich brain development. And if it is uh, of good quality, then a baby... Uh, uh, will achieve the full potential. So according to World Health Organization, just before uh, pandemics, uh, they stated that over 200 million children below five years of age are not fulfilling their developmental potential due to the exposure to multiple risk factors, such as including poverty, malnutrition, and unsafe home environments. So uh, we have to uh, support the infants with nurturing care, which is uh, composed of five interrelated and indivisible components uh, in uh, opportunities for learning, responsive caregiving, safety and security, and adequate nutrition, uh, of, of course, with good health. And nurturing care and support from adult uh, caregivers are essential for human infant survival. And when we look for a child's uh, nurturing uh, and the grow up and the important developmental uh, period, we can call this a, all including within the child serving ecosystem. And the key factors in this child serving ecosystem include the primary caregivers and direct child serving persons. But of course, this is not limited to the familial context and 
parenting experience, but also it comprehends the professional care in early childhood education services, such as daycare and uh, pre-primary school. And in those pre-primary schools and primary schools, teacher-child interactions represent the most aligned component of early childhood education care. And the caregiver-child interactions and their quality appear to be essential in supporting cognitive and behavioral development together with social and emotional growth. And each of these can impact this development, but also we, uh, there's an opportunity for, opportunity for intervention to promote child well-being. But of course, not only the teachers or the families, but also kids learn from kids. They play, learn, and grow together. But uh, when we look to learning, we have two, we have many steps of learning, but through nurturing and supportive relationships, children are sustained in learning, understanding, and regulating their behavior and emotions. And with teacher-child uh, teacher interactions, there are many steps for the kids to develop uh, their emotional uh, development, learning process, and always the social emotional skills. But what happened with COVID? Actually, we know that children somewhat, le somewhat less like to get uh, infected or experience severe symptoms of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but it caused a widespread and profound disruptions in daily life for children across the globe. And these adversely affected uh, this global public health emergency, it affected in many direct and indirect ways the uh, kids. Social distancing, sheltering in place, closing of schools and nurseries, crash childcare centers, playgroups, also the playgrounds, uh, they, the, all of the kids forced to face a sudden and new normal. And beyond adults, uh, these significant disruptions in the lives of children they are not with, without consequences. So nearly more than 100 countries, they closed the schools. Uh, so the education of more than 80% of children worldwide was affected. Uh, it was, of course, true to uh, stop the, <clears throat> it was essential to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, but it has a disproportionately negative impact in those already facing other adverse social determinants, including those from lower income or single income households, families, and families who do not have access to technology at home. And of course, the pandemic has exacerbated the children's risk for exposure to trauma globally, including the loss of primary caregivers, increased family violence, increased limited supports, economic and psychological stress. And school closures have had a significant impact on school performance, especially among vulnerable populations such as disabled kids. So uh, what we had to do and what we uh, have to do for uh, the uh, coming up days of uh, pandemic, we have to increase our public spots and posters uh, just to uh, teach the parents how to parent. So they have to parent uh, seven days, 24 hours, besides living that social stress, economical stress, online working for long hours, mm -hmm. but the kids around uh, the working mom or dad. And also we have to think about the health and social workers who are not at home, and their, but their kids are at home and trying to learn from the uh, digital uh, learning systems. And so we have to increase these public spots and posters, such as to set aside time to spend with each child. This is a, a poster from uh, UNICEF World Health Organization and CDC. And also we have to uh, teach our parents, uh, teach the adults uh, about the milestones of the uh, infants uh, <clears throat> to to catch up with their development and uh, to, um, to recognize the delays in their development. And also we have to teach our adults and uh, parents uh, how to play with their uh, infants and 
how to nurture their mm -hmm. children's spiritual and ethical reflections during the COVID-19 lockdown. So we have to teach the <clears throat> families that they have to share the household chores with age appropriate help from children and to eat all the meals together as a family with uh, a positive and lighter conversation mm -hmm. uh, time using it as a uh, this time for uh, meal times for positive and lighter conversations to support the psychology of the uh, kids and encourage everyone in the family to talk how they feel and suggest ideas on how you can support each other. And of course, we have to talk with our kids about the situation and ask for their opinion and load knowledge and they can talk, draw, or role play what they know and how they feel all through this pandemic period. So uh, coming to my last words, I can uh, summarize this period and uh, how to uh, how to stop this domino effect in early childhood uh, development. We we learned that COVID nineteen has highlighted the key gaps in meeting the needs of young children and exacerbated the existing societal fissures. And also the pandemic has and will likely continue to adversely affect many different aspects of children's health and well-being. And it's important for pediatricians to be aware of these consequences of COVID-19 and take steps to help their patients now and in the future. And because the virus continues to reach many parts of the world, continued research is needed to identify and evaluate any additional COVID-related challenges and concerns that adverse impact the growth and development of children. Thank you for uh, very much for your attention. Uh, and I will be answering your questions at the end of the, all of the speakers. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Mongan Aiking, excellent presentation. So now I let the micro to my colleague Nabin to introduce thank our next speaker. Thank you, thank you, Carlos. And uh, uh, we have question answer session in last, uh, uh, but there are many uh, short questions are coming out in chat. And if speakers feel like they can interact with the, the audience, but uh, uh, formally, we will take question answer in the last. So my it is now my pleasure to now introduce my good friend, Professor Dheeraj Sa, uh, who is a pediatrician by training and currently serving as director professor in the Department of, of Pediatrics University College of Medical Sciences, a very prestigious institute in the in, in India. Uh, he has uh, uh, served as editor in chief of uh, uh, Indian Pediatrics, the official index journal of Indian Academy of Pediatrics from 14 to uh, 19. And currently he is Dean of the Indian College of Pediatrics, which is academic wing of Indian Academy of Pediatrics. He has been honored uh, with many uh, fellowship. Uh, he has contributed many uh, to many books, chapters, including in uh, Nelson textbooks of pediatrics, uh, he is on edi uh, he is uh, editor associate editors of annals of national academy uh, and bmc pediatrics and review on several medical journals uh, over to you dheeras we look forward to uh, see you, what was the impact on the nutrition dr. Naveen, thank you dr navin bhai for uh, nice uh, detailed uh, introduction and i would just uh, start with my presentation So, uh, so I would be discussing about nutrition. We already know that nutrition is an important component of early childhood development. So what are the post-pandemic challenges? Uh, we know that uh, to uh, develop optimally, children should have equitable access to quality health, nutrition, protection, and early learning services. And we have to support our parents and caregivers to provide positive parenting and nurturing care which includes nutrition as an essential component. If we see the focus on nutrition as far as ECD is concerned, uh, it starts from the antenatal period. We have to ensure adequate nutrition for mother, birth to three years, then uh, toddler, early childhood years, and even uh, later childhood years. So adequate nutrition, you will see that is an important component of early childhood 
development throughout the age from conception till eight years of age. Now, we already have uh, targets in front of us. And we know that we have to reduce stunting, reduce undernutrition, wasting, reduce maternal and childhood anemia, reduce low birth weight, increase the rate of inclusive breastfeeding. And we also know that even before the start of pandemic, most of the countries were not on the right track to meet these targets. And now COVID has really disrupted these targets. So the nutritional scenario was already challenged, especially in the vulnerable settings. And probably COVID-19 pandemic has taken up back by several years in meeting the targets. And it has threatened early childhood development of millions of children. Uh, according to estimates, about 42 to 66 million children might have fallen into extreme poverty and rising malnutrition is expected as also highlighted by the earlier speaker because of the missed school. So when they miss school, they not only miss education, they also miss school based meals which are, uh, which are provided in most of the low and middle income countries. Now why uh, uh, nutrition has become a problem in and after COVID-19 pandemic. The main reason is food insecurity because of low, loss of income and livelihood and the food supply and uh, processing chains have become disrupted because of the repeated lockdowns. There is a restricted access to nutritious food, misinformation uh, about uh, especially about the maternal and child nutrition has also hampered the childhood uh, development. There is disruption in child nutrition programs, as already highlighted, through school and uh, health center-based midday meal programs. And even the supplementation programs like iron and vitamin A programs have become disrupted because of the closure of schools, health centers, through which they were being provided. Uh, this is just an example of the loss of income. This is from the low-income uh, shanties of Bangladesh. And this graph just shows that uh, during the period of the first lockdown, the family incomes in these poor shanties who were already challenged, they fell by almost as uh, uh, little as uh, 25% of the original. Not only undernutrition is a problem, the overnutrition part is also a problem in uh, during and after COVID-19 pandemic. There has been a reduction in physical activity. There is an increase in sedentary and screen time. There is an increased trend of consumption of junk foods and sugar sweetened beverages, and it has been well documented that during COVID epidemic, pandemics, children had consumption of more junk foods and uh, SSBs. There are psychological factors like boredom and separation, which also lead to reduction in physical activity as well as, as, well as overeating. So we know that there is a problem, there is a problem of double burden, undernutrition, overnutrition. So we need to uh, gear ourselves. We need to invest in nutrition. We already know that nutrition is the best investment and adults who are undernourished as children, they earn at least 20% less. Undernutrition and nutritional deficiencies cost up to 2.5 trillion per year, but we also know that overnutrition must also be costing similarly. And the cost benefit analysis of nutritional interventions, they report a return of 18 times. If you invest $1, you are going to get the benefit of $18. We have to reach the un unreached, the challenge is to reach the unreached who are vulnerable, children from the refugee camps, children who are institutionalized, children who are displaced, homeless, migrants, slum dwellers, children with disabilities, street children. So we need to rebalance our nutritional intervention so that the impact of physical distancing and lockdown strategies, if they happen on, in future again, so these children are uh, spared from these uh, hindrances. We need to expand social protection program to reach the most vulnerable children and we have to prioritize the continuity of child-centered nutritional services with a particular focus on equity of access. So we need to expand our programs to reach the most vulnerable. Uh, regarding strategies to prevent and control of malnutrition after COVID, we have food-based or rather education-based uh, strategies. We may have food-based approach like ensuring food security and providing food to the families. We may have medicine-based like supplementation programs, food fortification programs, and improving public health measures, basic services in form of water, sanitation, hygiene, and immunization. 
So the most important component as per uh, me is the infant and young child feeding. We already know that there are immense benefits of early and exclusive breastfeeding. So we need to tackle misinformation related to infant feeding practices in context of COVID-19 so that the breastfeeding is not hampered and the feeding is continued even when the mother is not well or the child is not well and in disaster situation. And we must resist formula use and donations because this becomes an opportunity for some uh, companies to provide formula to sometimes donate and which becomes a habit for the families and that hampers the early childhood development. Similarly, about complementary feeding, we have to emphasize on key messages, not only on what to feed, but also how to feed, how many times, how much. And we have to counsel on general tips about hand washing, use of iodized salt, iron syrup, and vitamin A. So there is these programs must not be compromised uh, because of the COVID or its after effects. We already know that dietary diversity is a problem. This graph is from India, the most comprehensive national nutritional survey, which was conducted in 2019. We already know that uh, apart from the, uh, the less consumption of calories and proteins, there is problem related to dietary diversity. We have very poor dietary, diver dietary diversity. So we have to emphasize our need for consumption of a variety of foods, providing a variety of macro and micronutrients. Medicine-based approach, like providing uh, micronutrient supplementations for short term after COVID, uh, this is unlikely to be successful because uh, we do not have proper screening systems in low middle income countries. Uh, there may be poor acceptance in communities related to the uh, misinformation, uh, there is poor adherence to uh, medicines and uh, mostly the control programs which have used the medicine based approach in short term have not been very successful. But yes, we need to continue it for target targeted groups in conjunction with preventive measures. Fortification is a strategy which can be and I think which uh, many countries have implemented already including India, it can, it can reach large segments of at risk population without uh, requirement of any changes in consumption pattern. And it can be delivered effectively through existing food delivery systems, provided the, uh, so these systems are not disrupted repeatedly because of the lockdown. So we have to make these systems resilient to any future uh, effect of or future outbreaks of COVID-19 or any similar pandemic. So the key messages are that COVID-19 pandemic has likely affected children nutritional severely with consequent effects on early childhood development, especially in low middle income countries and conflict settings. So we develop guidelines and uh, standard operating procedures for nutrition programming in the context of COVID-19 while observing COVID appropriate protocols. We need to develop appropriate messages to prevent misinformation, to protect young and infant child feeding and ensure continued emphasis on uh, child care. So, uh, Indian Academy of Pediatrics has already come with recommendations related to uh, healthy eating, reducing screen time, and these are very, very relevant during and after the COVID pandemic. Uh, regarding action, we have to scale up our nutrition program, we have to gear ourselves, we have to make these programs resilient to any future outbreaks, and we already know that there is a surge in number of severely malnourished and anemic children. We need to uh, brush up, we need to uh, push up our supplies of the therapeutic nutrition uh, interventions. And we need to support mother, families, and infant and young child feeding practices. We need to monitor violations of the IMS Act or the similar acts throughout the world. And we have to develop uh, strategies including IYCF hotline for counseling of lactating mothers and caregivers. So uh, with this, I'll thank you. I'll thank the organizers and thank all of you for patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dheeraj, for an excellent talk. Uh, please stay for the uh, question answer session. Sure, uh, and I now request my friend Carlos to introduce the new spe uh, next speaker. Thank you, Naveen. Now it's uh, continuing our webinar, and it's uh, my pleasure, it's an honor to introduce my good friend, Dr. Antonio Rizzoli. Um, Dr. Rizzoli is a pediatric neurologist, he's a Mexican pediatrician, a pediatric neurologist. His PhD was about development and a screening tool for child development. He is the author of the CDE test, the mandatory screening tool for ECD evaluation in Mexico. 
together with the design of health model of service of ECD in Mexico. He's a consultant for UNICEF, Peru and Panama and coordinator for the individual measures group for the RMD, the Latin American Network for KCD Measures and Policy in Early Childhood, and member of the advisory board of the National System for Child and Adolescent Protection. He also founded the Fellow of Developmental Pediatrics in Mexico. So he had a lot of experience and it's an honor to have you here. Go ahead, Dr. Rizzoli. Well, uh, thank you so much to all. And first, I'm going to change a little bit the situation because the uh, 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 talk that I am trying to explain the next minute is to challenge that parenthood has in, in child development. And first of all, I would like you to help me to scan using that QR code or using your cell phones and enter the code 32922364. In Mentimenter to be able to interact because one of the things that uh, we are going to face, and this is what you are going to be seeing, is how to make this uh, interaction is something productive and something positive. So, what's the first point uh, about general health and parental empowerment and child nurture? First, we need to understand that we have to be enable to connect. And thank you all from all around the country, from different sites. Uh, this is a QR where you can find more information about me and thank you for your hearts. Because the first thing that we have to understand now is that the world has been changed and we need to have the strategies to be able to connect it together. And this is the first point that we have to get, how to make the children and how to make the adults that we are a part or something. Thank you for all of the people that are using right now that. And if everyone wants to use, I am going to uh, copy the link and I am going to send you in the chat if you are able to participate. Because the first point is, uh, have you used Menti before? Yes or no, but this is a good uh, idea that you could be using and it's something that it could be helpful. Why? Because we need to connect. And this is an idea of anonymity. First, what of the uh, challenge that parents are having? Uh, first, is that sometimes uh, 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 people now are using all, uh, are used to be a passive actors through the screens in a, a green dot uh, talking. And what is happening now that we can be having a conversation with my grandmother that is in one country, but my father maybe and is working and the mother and how to use the technology in a proper way is something that I'm going to be focusing on uh, primary. And the first thing that we have to understand and we have to be asking now uh, everyone is, uh, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, you can send me an email uh, at the end or to connect me. But the, the, grand quest, uh, the good question that we should be doing right now is, how are you feeling right now? And something that is helping this uh, idea of Menti, it's, for example, someone says it's sleepy and probably if I would be in person and someone says it's sleepy or tired, I would say, oh, why? But this idea of connect through the anonymity, but at the same time to be able to interact, allow us to feel what it's feeling everyone. So for example, if someone is feeling sleepy, someone is tired, no esperanzado, concentrating, sleepy, actions, okay, well, excited, grateful, worried, that is something that is happening. And this is exactly what the children and the parents that we are having the responsibility to help her to be uh, the best uh, parent possible or to uh, achieve the best level of child development is with this question. And the first recommendation for you as a pediatrician of people that is working with children is you could use in your background some uh, uh, board 
where you could put uh, the emotion that you're having right now and not to criticize, but just to get them connected. And it's the main idea, how to get connected with the people and how to understand that if I am feeling tired, if I am feeling hungry, if I am feeling great, how to manage that. Because we need to change that idea. And right now, the feeling is the most important thing that we have to take care of. And the first question that we should do when we know is, how are you feeling right now? Uh, and if someone answers something that it's not necessarily good, we have to get that. And at the same time, uh, this is something important. It three words associated with post-pandemic era. And if you continue helping me uh, answering with this idea, because one of the things that we have to learn about the post-pandemic is that the knowledge and the activity is not as it used to be. Suddenly, as we have seen, uh, there was a change so huge uh, in the humanity that for the first time in thousands of years, the people changed the way that they used to interact. And now we are in, in, interacting in, in this kind of webinars that uh, five years ago was uh, something that was not necessarily so much uh, a good, good appreciated and, and it was changing. So we have to be changing about you now. And for example, this is new normal. Yes, but what is the new normal? Uh, the new normal is uh, the normal because it's the statistical that is going to be. Are we doing that? And we some feel the pressure, sanction, worrying, aware, not that, retrogression, freedom, challenging, relief, change, sickness. Look how there is two huge branches about that. First is the way that we have to be thinking about uh, people. Some people get uh, better with the connection with the internet because they can be free, because they can be connected, because they can be in the family. But at the same time, we have seen a huge increase in violence, uh, uh, domestic violence. Why? Because they are in the same place, in the same moment, in the same uh, uh, point. And this is something that we could be thinking about. And about early childhood, now if we connect how we feel with the pandemics, with early childhood, we're going to see that something that is happening now is that, as Elia said uh, in an amazing way, and she is an amazing politician and, and also an amazing uh, doctor, uh, what happened? That during the pandemics, the early childhood was uh, uh, released to less uh, important thing. If I have two computers and three children, I am going to give the computer to the older children. What happened with the younger ones? And at the same time, the children, the younger children, saw me, but they are saw me. But what what is happening? Are they interacting? Are they doing things? Are they doing uh, uh, some activities? Are they feeling that I am when I am not present? Which is one of the uh, challenges that we have. So it's important. Foundation growth, nutrition, fragile plate, friends, development. Look how we are creating this this knowledge about this idea of world clouds, but at the end of the day, it's important, it's crucial, it's growth, but we have to be, it's fragile. But at the same time, what are we doing to make him uh, or make him uh, growing better? And now we're going to see that we have a problem because we were used to have the values for the 20th century, but now in the 20, we are now in the 21st century and it's something different. And look here, their abilities, effective communication, white knowledge, leadership, academic degree, good memory, problem solution, teamwork, and creativity. And what are these situations needed in 2022? And while you're answering, for example, you're uh, saying that everyone is important, it's going to change. But the truth is that now, what is really very important in this year is effective communication. Effective communication includes how I'm communicating with you, that you are across the country, with across the world, with different cultures, with different time, with different skills to be able to interact. We need to help the children to interact. That's the reason that I use Manti instead of PowerPoint to be a, a, a tool that you could use to interact. But but at the same time, we need to, to change the idea that I am something focused. And for example, maybe I am going to be uh, to interact with the children and maybe with the children, it's not going to use what I am doing. But instead, if I starting to be a bear, they in something or a giraffe, or maybe I am now 
a cat, it's going to be helpful. Why? Because maybe the children is going to feel more connected with me if I am doing online communication with an avatar instead of myself. And uh, white knowledge is less important because uh, you can Google it. And one challenge that we have in Mexico is that now people, uh, you, you prescribe something and they go out and they say, it's really working. Uh, ask with the mothers and we have lost or uh, go a uh, role as a pediatrician as the people that know and it's going to help and now we're they are uh, giving you are giving that role to the family to the mothers and to the mother groups and to whatsapp what is happening leadership is quite important but leadership is something that sometimes we, we said oh i am not in a, an authority position and that that's authority that's not leadership leadership is the way to get uh, to achieve a, a, a goal together. Academic degree is less important now, but good memory also is less important, but problem solution gets very important and teamwork and creativity. And one thing that we, we should be thinking about is what are the children in the school during learning? Are learning effective communication, creative solution, creativity, problem solution, teamwork, and leadership, or they are still learning in what was useful in the past? And it's a reflection for you. And are the challenges that you have been in your practice and suddenly you're going to see that they uh, you have a mask. The studies have showed that the mask doesn't impair the language communication because you have to use your eyes to communicate an idea. But at the same time, what is happening that we right now having a lot of children. I don't know if that happening in, in your countries or in uh, your uh, re uh, residence. Uh, but, but uh, or in the different uh, places that you live, but something we are having a lot of children with problems in uh, developmental delay of language. At two years, they should be saying three words with subject, verb, and object, and now they are not doing that, and they are not having eye contact. And what happened with the eye contact? That maybe it's a problem that we have to consider. So communication, safety, screening, education, catch and mobilization of children. And the challenge in a pandemic and the country for pandemic area is the same thing. What is happening is the policy is the idea is to structure is how to build something else. And this is a document about technology that it's in Spanish or Portuguese that was a elaborated about a organization for our American states. If someone is interested in it, you can download it. Uh, unfortunately, it's just in Spanish or in Portuguese. I was the author of the first capture chapter, but talks about what is happening with the uh, technology in childhood. And also, this is, for example, a resource that you could use a free resource for the University of California, Davis, that's help is in your hands. And it helps the parents to know how to make connection with the children uh, uh, in, the, in the speaking. And close, and, and this is my cell phone with a plus uh, 52 or the code. What I would like to tell is first, we need to help the parents to understand how to interact, that we have to use the technology, that we have to change the idea of what is going to be their success and to improve communication safety to uh, increase the, the questions of emotions. And at the same time, to be able to create points and use the, the technology in a good way, maybe with avatar, with, the, with everything, but at the same time, using this idea to be able to connect. Because what we need to do in the parenthood right now, and we as the doctors is to help them to do the things. And thank you so much. And I hope that was uh, uh, useful for you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rizzoli, an excellent and interactive uh, participation, uh, very productive. So, Naveen, I think we need to introduce our last speaker. Yeah, so uh, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce my uh, dear friend for more than 15 years, Professor Manuel Cards, uh, who is from Israel, born in Argentina, uh, and he had he has ex, uh, almost 50 years in practice. He is a, a senior pediatrician hospital and community setting. Uh, he was uh, deputy general director at a tertiary care hospital and medical director in HMO in Israel for uh, many years. Uh, he was uh, uh, from 2016, he's president of Gosen Foundation, uh, dedicated to creating a holistic community healthcare environment. He uh, the past president of Israel Pediatric Association. He was member of standing committee of uh, uh, IPA representing Europe and secretary general of European Pediatric Association and so many 
uh, more to his honor. Uh, floor is your uh, uh, Dr. Manuel cards. You are you are muted. Unmute yourself. together this uh, important session and of course of the people that we are that are uh, are listeners okay do you see my presentation i understand yes yes we can see that you okay you thank you very make much make it uh, full screen make yes. it full screen yeah yeah and thank you very much Emma. I, I wanted to talk about pandemics and toxic stress and, and its effects of early childhood development and, and trying to bring uh, together, first of all, the, the reality in our global health. Because less developed regions have about 80%, 83% of all the world population is 6 billion, 650 million people in 2021. And they only consume less than 11% of all the global expenditure, but account 90% of the global disease burden. And this is one issue that we have to, to remember very well. The second big point is the children's rights situation in 2020. And according with Humanium and, and other um, important um, data groups, we know about the situation in all over the countries that they are very bad with difficult situation and evident problems in about 70 to 80 percent of all of the globe and just some countries with a good situation regarding children children rights and when we talk about countries we have to understand also that inside the countries probably they have some evident problems, um, of course, of rights. The main issue for, for, for me to talk about is to try to, to change the paradigm and to try to shift from sick care to well care to understand this in, in a better, better way. Toxic stress in childhood involve many issues. The most important, of course, poverty, discrimination, inequalities, maltreatment and abuse, and of course, all the issues regarding new morbidity. My point is to, that we have to always change about basic sciences, talking about growth and developmental for health, to social sciences, and talking about social determinant of health and bringing the risk versus the protective factors. All the time we have to take in account uh, those issues. And to understand also from that from the beginning of our life, from the preconception care to the adulthood care, we have the same structure. And always, always social determinant of health are big part of the issue together with basic sciences, congenital issues, genetic of, 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 of cares, but all the toxic stress is changing our life, bringing to uh, difficulties, on the adult uh, health care. And of course, uh, facing COVID, the issue is worsening. We understand here that if we have risk factors like poverty, caregiver, mental health, child maltreatment, single parents and low maternal education have a cumulative impact of the child. And maltreated children exposed to as many as six additional risks like we see here, they have about 90 to 100% of likelihood to having one or more delays of cognitive language and emotional development. And we have to understand also that people that having seven to eight serious adverse experience in childhood are three times more likely to have cardiovascular diseases in, as an adult, as well diabetes, hypertension, stroke, obesity, and some other forms of of cancer. This is very important thing, and this was written time before uh, COVID-19. But what happened with COVID-19? Again, 
always we have to think on the issue of basic science and social determinants of health. Children with pre-existing neurodevelopmental conditions, ADHD, mental health and health preconditions, had the greatest fears related to COVID-19. Disruption of health services had serious effect on, on them, and this one of the, the, the main issues that happened almost in all over the countries because of, 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 the, of the lockdown. And, and, and I bring here the syndemic concept. The syndemic concept for me is so important to understand the, the, the synergism that we have in between COVID-19 and other issues. The term was developed 30 years ago by, by Merrill Singen to call attention to the synergistic nature of the health and social problems facing the poor and unserved population. But more of that, we understand that even we talk about pandemics and pandemics is talking about the virus spread over the world, we have some type of syndemic endemic concept in every country because every country has different decisions, different political concept, different um, influence of the media and the public. And this changed the way that it was um, uh, uh, what we see, we saw the, the, the impact of COVID in, in, in every country. Of course, that we, if we have sex or age, girls suffer greater depression, anxiety, boys more substance abuse, older children also than, than younger ones. The socioeconomic status, children living in poverty and social and lower socioeconomic status at greater risk of stress and depressive, depressive symptoms. Risk stigma based on ethnicity, lockdown and isolation and risk perception related to COVID were significant cause of anxiety and stress. Of course, what I talk about childhood experience that repeat children reported pre-existing adverse childhood experiences and maltreatment were at increased risk of stress during COVID-19. Parenting family strife and separation with negative effects while positive parenting and communication were strongly supportive uh, factors against social determinant of health, measuring and weighting risk and protective factors. And location, of course, children in rural areas or more affected areas where COVID had high mental distress. Of course, we have a lot of information about that, about um, a lot of, of publications funding of substantial 10% increase in mental health services utilizations um, and, and long and short term consequences. Since the start of COVID-19 pandemics, survey data for children and adolescents reported higher rise of anxiety and depressive symptoms and parent, parental concerns about their children's mental health. The State of the World Children 2021 UNICEF I have here the data, you can go for that and to see the, the, all the papers uh, written about that. Lancet published in 2020 mental health consideration for children in quarantine because of, of, of COVID-19. And the most important issue for me is to try to understand that also in all those countries, independent what the type of country we're talking about, we saw in a, that increased screen time has negative effect in COVID-19 and, and mental issues, parental stress, of course, risk of child abuse, neglect and exploitation, children with special needs. They are more in more uh, issues regarding uh, pathology regarding the COVID-19. Children with pre-existing mental illnesses, of course, they are worsening the situation. Children suffering from depression and anxiety disorders, and of course, children in quarantine. This is, in fact, the, to try to talk together about syndemic instead of pandemics. This will change our, change our mind. What we don't know exactly, it was happened today because we are facing a new wave, probably. We are facing new type of virus. 
probably less um, serious, but very contagious that we don't know about the next variant and the next mutation. And exactly we don't know if we, have, we are in part uh, behind the pandemics or the worst is coming ahead of us. And this is the main issue to, to talk. I think that the, the, this, the, 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 the idea to bring this um, issue to this panel was important. And, and I hope that we can clarify some things uh, during the next the, 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 um, uh, the conversation that we, we will have in, in minutes from now. The key, the key findings of attitudes, behaviors, and mental health conditions uh, are very, very clear. Depression, fear, and anxiety, suicide behavior, and, and with limited evidence, but this should not be assumed to have increased as a result of a pandemic with a big sign of uh, question. Trauma and post-trauma stress, part of that talking about the prolonged COVID that exactly we don't know what is, External behavior with increase on anger, negativity, uh, neg negativity, irritability, inattention, especially in children with autism and, and ADHD, and uh, alcohol and substance use and abuse increase uh, uh, because of the problematic use of alcohol and sub substance uh, among more, mostly in adolescents, especially in, in, in boys. Of course, a big change on lifestyle behaviors because of the sedentary behavior, because of the screen time, because of the irregular uh, sleep patterns. We, we, we need to create a new generation of, of pediatricians, and this is what, what we are trying to, to, to do now, and to try to, to have the pediatrician as, the, as who is trying to generate an exciting experience in social pediatrics, trying to, to orient in teaching, to a new generation of pediatricians and people taking care of children, working in the community for the carers, adolescents and children, to bring a strategy with communication channels, building alliances between governments, medical organizations, universities, HMOs, international societies like, like IPA and, and European and Latin American and African and Asia harmonizing between different health, education, and welfare providers in the community, trying to enhance ethical values and the advocacy role of pediatric practice. We need to be politicians. We need to, to have our influence in government to try to talk better about causes uh, regarding COVID and to be active when or when not to, 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 be, to, to, to vaccinate and new models of clinical settings, community intervention programs, and type of practices. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Manuel Cards. And uh, we will straight go to the question answer session. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carlos, uh, you want to start? Maybe we can ask one question first to each panelist and uh, yes. expect a, a very uh, quick answer. So, uh, Dr. Helia, uh, there are many questions for you, but uh, can you uh, pick up uh, Carlos? Do you want to go ahead? Yes, thank, thank you very much, Naveen. May I answer these questions? This is the idea. Yeah, but uh, 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 yeah, you can pick up an uh, answer in very short, not necessarily all the questions. Please go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, main challenges faced for pandemic in early childhood development. Of course, uh, we we are living in all the countries in a, a very crucial and crisis in terms not only in health, but also in economic and social uh, areas. Then the main challenge for our children for, for early childhood development is to put on the agenda this issue because very frequently children are, are really um, out of the agenda because the children 
they don't have necessary a voice. We need to be the voice. Uh, they don't vote in the elections. And it's very important for us, the pediatricians, the politicians, to put this issue and to, and to use all the, all the media and all the, the mechanisms to, to put children and to put the importance uh, of invest in children because every every government said say uh, children first children are the more important issue in, in, in my government but when when you see the investment in in, in early childhood development is very very poor huh? very very poor then then for me the main challenge is to is to is to put all our knowledge, our experience, our uh, publications uh, in the places where the decisions are taken. Take two, <laughs> sorry. Then, then this is for me, and because we need to we need to put on on on, on, on the field many strategies uh, to protect family, social protection for children, and and, and so on. What initiative does PAHO ta has taken to address challenge faced by pandemic childhood development? Well, PAHO, PAHO uh, Pan American Health Organization, uh, is focused on, 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 I think, that is focused on in the pandemic now, more in vaccines, more in, in, uh, in, the, in the integration of the society. And I think that, uh, no, I don't know in this moment exactly if PAHO has some specific uh, strategy for this, but I'm going to, to research about. Thank you for the question, it's very important. What is general consensus of the developmental delay in terms of learning and behavior in children? Well, uh, one of the general consens consensus is that we have a very uh, inequity in terms of, uh, of uh, early child development. It's very clear that in, in population poor, or with low level of education, uh, housing not good, and whatever, uh, the, the possibility of, for a child, for a child to achieve the uh, optimal potential in terms of initial learning is very, very poor. Then uh, it's, it's, this is the consensus. And why now we are more concerned about this because two years or three years of pandemic uh, process where a lot of lockout and, 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 and uh, problems in mental health in the family, uh, losing the, 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 the family, the, 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 the job and so on, is only risk factor as uh, our dear Dr. Manuel Cas uh, was very clear to explain the effects in terms of, of social determinant of health and well-being. What practical advice do you have to reset the social effect of preschool COVID? Well, I think that it is a very good question because um, the women today uh, in, in, in most of the countries are uh, working uh, out of home, then, then it's very important that uh, if we think that 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 early child development is a right, then the state must be guarantee uh, the government must guarantee this right, and this is the the, the role of the government to to generate the con the conditions and 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 the and the, um, the investment and the 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 the, the job, the, the work to, to put uh, uh, an offer of preschool uh, in this moment. Do unborn children have rights? Well, um, rights uh, in general is uh, for, for persons that are uh, born. Huh? This is the, in the, in the, um, is the idea. Uh, uh, one in Chile, in my country, one person is uh, uh, has a right when he was, is born, 
and is in, is incorporated into the society as a person. Uh, we can discuss a lot uh, about this, uh, but uh, in terms of a legal approach, this is the, the answer. Will it be good or ethical to legislate on a legislation? Of course, it's very important to legislate and to put most of the of the right of the child in a in a in a legislative framework. And this is my my job now in the in the Congress in Chile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, can we can we project the next question? And I will request. Uh, uh, all the uh, speakers, you can uh, uh, try to answer in the chat uh, uh, chat box and uh, please pick up only one question from the list and uh, rest, please do type in the chat box. Dr. Ilke Mungan, oh, please. You can I will pick try up. to choose the one. Yeah, uh, and uh, you, you can answer, you can answer in the uh, chat box rest of the question. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Tiara Mangiwa, I think the, I, I read it correct, I hope. Is there any way to reverse the negative impact to the children due to activity limitation during pandemic? Uh, uh, of course, uh, lost time is lost, but uh, in, in upcoming days, we have to uh, increase the uh, physical activities within the uh, also, both the preschool ch children and school children. Uh, probably, it's um, it, it would be better to take children out of school and uh, make the lectures within the garden or outside places. And for example, during the lockdown times uh, in Turkey, uh, also there was lockdown for uh, small children uh, during the daytime. It was the only time for them to go out for a few hours, but the playgrounds were open and we increased our uh, our children's time uh, to increase their physical activity uh, to spend more time in these playgrounds. So lost time effect, actually we lost it. And especially this is important for the first three years of age, because you know the most important motor, uh, major motor developments and minor motor skills are uh, developed in these age. And uh, I have many patients uh, who, who were not exposed to uh, these physical activities because they were just sitting at time, uh, sitting at uh, home, no one was dealing with them and their uh, speech was regressed and uh, they, have, uh, they have lost their social abilities, not only the physical activities, but also the social abilities are lost, their language development is lost. So lost time is lost, but to uh, avoid this or to overcome this effect, then we have to increase our, for example, for language uh, problems, we have to uh, increase, uh, we, we have to try to teach these infants to uh, speak more and to articulate the words and the uh, hyponyms, everything. We have to deal more. So lost time is lost, but we have to deal more. Thank you. <clears throat> please, please do do answer other questions in the chat box. Can we project the next? Uh, yeah, Dheeraj, pick up your question and uh, rest of the question in chat box. Dheeraj, go ahead. Okay, so uh, we'll pick up uh, the question related to do grandparents and extended family have a role? Is dragon diet good for toddlers? So, uh, I will say yes, if uh, whether the grandparents uh, or the other relatives, whether they are staying in the same household or whether they are staying in a different household, they definitely have a role on child's development. So because the child's development starts by interacting with the people and the first people the child meets is, at, uh, is with the, apart from parents, the other people who are living in the same household or maybe the parents who their parents are interacting, they could be grandparents, they could be relatives, they could be neighbors. So in overall child development, they definitely have a role regarding nutrition. 
yes there is a culture of uh, feeding uh, children uh, by grandparents but then that should not be too much it should not be that the mother is not involved and only grandparents or other relatives are involved so uh, definitely the parents mother and father they have a major role in providing nutrition to the child but yes everybody has to be taken along and when it is not possible for the mother to provide care the grandparents definitely can prevent uh, can uh, provide care back in time I, I used, but whatever kind of diet it is whether it is vegetarian vegan or non vegetarian uh, it may be good provided all the nutrients are provided provided it's a mix of uh, diet which provides adequate amount of uh, and uh, calories most of the essential amino acids and micronutrients so uh, it could be good uh, some nutrients might be missing if the problem nutrient could be b12 and then uh, for children who are on strict vegan diet they would definitely need some nutrients to be provided from outside like b12 you know, in absence of this i would say that it may not be good to have very strict diets for children they should have a mix of all kind of foods but if there is a strict culture of a particular kind of diet in the family the children need to be provided the nutrients in form of fortification or supplementation thank you thank you dheeraj and please do answer other question can we go to the next set yes dr antonio your presentation was very good do you want to answer something here dr antonio uh, yes uh well uh the first uh point that i could say is that right now saying autism and diagnostic of autism spectrum disorder adhd and neurodevelopmental disorder including uh, uh, learning uh, problems it should be very cautious because there is a lot of different things that could be having that kind of problem and it's not necessarily that so my recommendation is you could have a child that have that kind of symptoms, a, a lack of language, lack of social contact, but probably is caused by the pandemic. So we should be uh, focusing on interaction, focusing on uh, uh, developing language, and that can be in, uh, increasing. At the same time, the pandemic has changed the way in which we interact and we have to use technology, taking into account that technology that's, uh, as this is the uh, not the end, but is a way to get connected. If we have in mind that technology is a way to get connected and a tool and not the end, we are going to be very different. And I will uh, answer the rest on the chat. Thank you so much for your time and for the invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, Dr. Manuel Cards. Yeah. One question and the uh, rest you can answer in chat and you already provided your email thank you yeah i put i put in the in the chat my my email if people want any requests i will be happy to, yeah, to yeah, answer yeah, I, uh, the, the, I think that um, uh, if there any impact to mental health of children after this pandemic of course yes and um, uh, it was before. It was before, and uh, for the last uh, years, we we see a lot of uh, changes uh, about uh, mental health in uh, children and adolescents. But of course, after or, or during this uh, pandemic, things are worsening. Um, I refer to many many articles uh, um, on that, and this is it very 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 clear. Um, the definition of toxic stress. Um, it's not so simple, but uh, there are many issues like uh, I already talked about, uh, like uh, poverty, maltreatment, all those issues regarding child protection issues. They are so uh, so important and, and probably inequality is the more important of that. Uh, and we are facing in every country and within every country. And uh, this is um, also an issue that uh, it's important to understand the, the meaning of, of toxic, uh, toxic stress. Um, protective factors um, are mostly what, what are coming from the beginning of, uh, of the conception, in fact. Uh, but then the, the parental issues and the parental uh, protection and, um, and uh, better understand of the, of the child and the, and the need 
um, trying to to protect the child, protect the baby, protect the child, protect the adolescent. Um, against toxic stress is complicated because when toxic stress is there, you need the special attention from a specialist. Um, and, and then the, the issue of uh, social, the social system in the country, uh, as was uh, so widely explained uh, by, 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 by the panel. Um, the stress of urban and suburban uh, rural, uh, rural children in the pandemics, of course, is, uh, is different. Uh, probably more affected the children in rural rural areas because of the possibility to to ask for for help. Um, it, it was uh, in all countries, including mine, um, a big issue to change the the mode or the way to 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 find the pediatrician the pediatrician or the doctor. <coughs> um, most of the consultation they were by by uh, digital, uh, this is by telemedicine, and <laughs> a lot less by, by frontal, um, frontal um, uh, type of, um, uh, of um, communication with, with the families and the child. Um, the issue of uh, if the pandemia Incremented in this of in um, in uh, the the uh, suicides and suicide attempts. Yes, we 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 see that um, the last uh, the last months uh, we prepare a, a, um, a statement together with European the European Academy of Pediatrics together with the European Confederation of uh, Primary Care Pediatrician of, of that on that. And uh, this is a, a big issue that has to be uh, uh, managed. Uh, but, but again, the most important thing for us in all of the issue is the role, the role of the pediatrician and the, and the role of the social services uh, um, working uh, in an accepted way. Thank you, Dr. Cards. Uh, uh, Dr. Carlo, over to you to for final comments and then over to admin office. Carlos? Yes, Naveen, thank you very much. <clears throat> I think we had heard uh, very interesting lectures today. And I think that we are agree all of what was that the early child development is a very, very critical stage in the life of the children. So we need to focus as a team. Uh, we need to focus as uh, many uh, participants of society as politicians, as pediatricians, as a family, as uh, uh, health providers, uh, we need to, to work as a group, as a team, because now we are learning something very different. I think none of us are experts in this kind of, of these uh, times, these difficult times. The pandemic of COVID-19 uh, is still evolving. So we need to be focused and still learning and to provide the best attention to our uh, children. So thank you very much to all. I think uh, it was a very productive webinar and I congratulate the IPA team because it was very successful a uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, over to admin. Yeah. Thank you. We extend our warmest round of applause and appreciation to our honorable speakers and, of course, to our moderators for an incredible and eye-opening discussion. As a token of our gratitude, we will now present certificates to our honorable speakers who have contributed greatly to our learning process today. To present the certificate, we now invite Professor Enver Hasanoglu, Professor Aman Pulungan, Dr. Carlos Alonso Rivera, and Dr. Naveen Thacker to the screen. To our speakers, kindly turn your videos on and smile as we spotlight you alongside your certificate. We will now be taking the photos. First for Dr. Helia Molina. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Next, uh, to Professor Akin, we will now take the photo. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thank you very much, Doctor. 
Next, we have Professor Dheeraj Sa. We will be taking the photo as well. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thank you very much, Professor. We'll now proceed to the next speaker. Dr. Antonio Rizzoli will be taking the photo. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thank you very much, Doctor. And lastly, to Professor Manuel Katz, we will also be taking the photo. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thank you very much to uh, all the professors and doctors. We will now be taking photos with the entire um, participants. If the admin office can help spotlight the speakers once again. And to all the participants, please turn your videos on. We will be taking the photo together with our honorable speakers. Thank you so much, Alia. Thank you. 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 All of you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for the invitation. And congratulations. Alia, phone me on mail. Three, two, one. <laughs> Proceeding to the next slide. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. All right. That concludes the photo session for today. Once again, on behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to extend our warmest round of gratitude and appreciation to all our speakers, moderators, and participants for making the international webinar on post-pandemic challenge on early childhood development a great success. To all the participants, kindly fill in the feedback form as detailed on the slides and that has been sent via the Zoom and YouTube chat. The certificate of attendance will be shared via email upon completion of the feedback form. Furthermore, the International PD the Pediatric Association conducts routine webinars with a wide range of topics concerning child health. To keep yourself up to date, we urge you to follow IPA on our social media platforms. We also have several opportunities for you to participate in IPA webinar and activities. First, IPA will be having the IPA Congress next year in 2023. For more details, log on to www.ipa2023congress.org. IPA also provides opportunities for healthcare workers to enroll in the IPA Vaccine Trust course to become a certified vaccine champion. The course is open to all healthcare workers for free. Refer to the post and the IPA webinar website for more information. We also have an upcoming webinar from the IPA Subcommittee on Education and Advocacy monthly webinar series with the topic of tips on child environmental health for the practitioner on 22nd July 2022. This webinar is exclusively for pediatricians, doctors, and healthcare professionals. Stay tuned to the IPA social media channels for more information regarding this webinar. Once again, warmest round of gratitude to all parties who have made this webinar a great success. Thank you, and we hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.